Hello everyone. Uh, this is a quick preview of uh, the features and functionality of new Soda CL, uh, which is Soda Checks language. So I'd like to give you a taste of what kind of checks are available in uh, Soda CL. Um, so I'm using here a database. On the left hand side, you can see um, it's a typical data warehouse uh, with um, dimension tables and fact tables. So we have around 28 tables here. And on the right hand side, um, I have just a, a shell where I'll show you the execution of Soda CL. So imagine that you uh, want to start with um, checking data reliability in your data warehouse. So you typically start with configuring your project by adding this configuration YAML. So here you can see I've uh, already prepared a small configuration file that is connecting to my local database. Uh, this is a Postgres database and there is some connection details and a password, a very secret password. And I have um, a checks file. So all you need to do is create a checks file. And in this case, there is a checks.yaml. And all Soda CL is essentially an extension of uh, YAML language. So all the Soda checks files are written in YAML syntax. Uh, imagine that I want to write now checks for, I have this table called account. And I'd like to check the row count for this um, account table or account dimension. So I'd like, I'll write dim account and I can validate if the checks for uh, row count uh, is greater than zero. So this is a, this is a check. And when I run this using soda command, so here's soda, uh, let me clear the screen quickly, soda scan and I will provide the configuration file. Uh, this can also be optionally kept in your home folder, so you don't need to specify it on the command line and which database I want to connect to. And then finally, what is my checks file? So here is this one. Now, as you can see, it has run um, the queries uh, on the database and made sure that the count is greater than zero. Now, the, sometimes when you're checking for the count, you'd also like to filter out uh, a specific column. So in this case, I have a dim account. Uh, let's say uh, I know that I have dim product and I would like to filter for color is um, blue. So what is happening here is I'm interested in checking if the column color matches blue and the row count is greater than zero. That means at least at least one row that is having a color blue. So this is a very typical use case where you would like to check the count for a given table when uh, the country is UK or Netherlands or uh, US, etc. So you can have, uh, you can validate the cross multiple checks. So I can do that one now. So you can see the check has passed. And uh, to give you another example, I can add more checks here. And in this case, I would like to check uh, red, red is also um, more than one row available in the database for red. So as you can see, there are two uh, checks now, and you can also pass a command line option called dash V that will print the queries that, uh, uh, that the table is executing. As you can see, it's not actually um, running two queries. We optimize it by uh, combining them into a single aggregation query. So you can see there is only one query being run when you filter for blue and red, etc. So this is one uh, very simple check. And once you start ingesting the data, you would like to check whether something is valid or not. So I would like to check whether there are any invalid colors in the database. So the by default, the validity would mean that the, uh, the, the column value is null. Uh, so let's check if there are any null values in this one. Uh, so if I run the same query again, or the same check again, now there are zero values that are, um, uh, there are invalid values. That means everything is considered to be valid. Now I can also specify exactly what kind of uh, valid values are there. Um, so I can specify that uh, the color must be within these uh, specified values. So I can provide valid values for a given uh, thing so that I can specify simply using valid values and then a list of values. So we've already seen there is black and red and blue in the database. So everything else should be considered as an invalid value. I know that in the database, um, there are silver and multi, etc. So when I run this, um, I should get some invalid values. So it will tell me that there are 343 invalid values because they are um, 
there are values that are not black, red, and blue. So there are even more. Now, imagine that uh, you want to uh, verify or uh, you want to see how many duplicates are there in the database. So obviously you would usually run this on a um, primary key or some other key. Um, but here for the sake of demo, I'm just gonna run it on the color. I know that there'll be duplicates because there is black repeated several times. Now, when you run this, then this check, um, I expect this check to fail and then give me the output to show how many duplicate values are there. So as you can see, when I run this, it is trying to tell me that, hey, you said you asked for making sure that there are no duplicate values, but there are nine values that are repeated and how many times they are repeated, there is a frequency that is being printed out here. You can see silver is repeated 52 times and NA and yellow, etc. So this NA, uh, which is not applicable, is not considered is not considered as a missing value surprisingly so i can go back to my invalid color and then specify that um, that should be zero but uh, i want to consider this um, na in the database to be a missing value so i can uh, write that as a missing value so this will be um, treated as a <clears throat> as a missing value, but it is not included in the validity. So uh, it is excluded from the valid values. Uh, and then uh, another kind of use case that uh, that we are very uh, familiar with is checking for the schema. So we can uh, check for some, several different things in a schema. For example, if you uh, check the table called fact underscore finance, um, and if you want to write any schema checks, uh, you would so let let me say um, I want to make sure that there is a required column and let me know when the required column is missing, then the test should fail. So you can write it with um, very readable syntax like missing uh, and the columns can be specified as a YAML list, for example. And um, so if you see on the left hand side, uh, Fact Finance has these um, eight columns and it doesn't have color, for example, just to show you how it looks like when this check fails. Now I'm adding a schema check to see what uh, if this column uh, is missing. Now it tells me, hey, this value has failed and uh, this is the color you're expecting this, uh, this column to be in the schema and it is also printing the measured schema is this one and the color is not there. So you can uh, also, instead of saying failure, uh, we also introduce a third type. So every check result can have either pass or fail or you can also make it a warning. So you don't want to fail, but rather just get a warning if this column is missing. So maybe it's not critical to you, but you, you use it in the information purposes. It's not used in calculations, for example. So you want to get a warning if something has happened. So in this case, there are zero failures, but um, only one warning. So this is made as a uh, warning. And there are several other schema checks that are available that will help uh, in identifying if the columns index is um, there or um, if there is a column that you don't want to be part of the schema. For example, if um, so, I want to fail when uh, forbidden column uh, present. And here, uh, imagine that you have a column called um, for whatever the reason, password hash in your data, uh, data warehouse um, or in the place or in the data source where you're ingesting the data from. So in that case, you don't want to copy that to your data warehouse. So you want to make sure that when you run the checks, the password hash is not copied. So this will fail if the column uh, forbidden uh, column is present in the uh, database. So you can catch the error in the ingestion. And um, what else can we do as, a, as an example? We have plenty of uh, statistical uh, data uh, or the statistical checks available. For example, minimums and maximums, etc. Uh, for example, if I add checks for fact, uh, let me see, we have product inventory and product inventory has um, something called units in. Uh, so I can say fact product uh, inventory and I can check minimum of unit um, units in uh, which is an integer uh, must be let's say uh, greater than uh, 20 
Now, if I run this, then it will check for anywhere uh, the minimum unit is greater than 20. It's going to tell me, oh, there are some things that are um, less than 20, for example. You can also optionally, uh, you can also add the thresholds. So by adding this uh, between zero and uh, 200, and this will run the query uh, to run the test to tell you if the um, minimum value of the unit's inventory is between 0 and 100. So here it clearly says, yes, it is between 0 and 200. Um, and you also have a minimum, maximum, and um, uh, several other things like sum and average, etc., that you can use. Now, um, I think I've already showed you the dupl uh, duplicates, but let me show you quickly how that looks like. So if you want to identify, are there any duplicates in the data? So um, as you know, some of the data warehouses are sometimes when you ingest the data, the, um, the constraints are not enforced, but for the sake of argument, let's say we are checking for uh, dim uh, employee dimension. And here I want to check for, are there any duplicates for uh, here, for example, uh, employee, employee underscore key. And I want to make sure that duplicates are uh, zero. So there are no duplicates for employee key. So when you run this, it says, well, there are absolutely no duplicates. If there is any duplicates, it's going to print it there. And you can also make it a combinational um, key, a, a combined key. So you can also check whether employee key and um, let's say sales territory, uh, territory key is actually, uh, let me quickly check the syntax, yeah. Uh, so sales territory key, the combination of this is not a duplicate. So now you can um, check that one as well. So the combination, so there is no employee uh, and sales territory key combination being duplicated in the data. And just to show you how it looks like for duplicates, uh, again, as a contrived example that we have seen already, um, I can check for, I know that the color is duplicated, so I can just do uh, the duplicate color should be zero. Then in this case, it's going to tell me that, hey, these are things are duplicated so many times. So there is a duplicate check and uh, the validity check. And you can also do several um, things with uh, invalid checks. And we also have validity checks in terms of uh, formats. For example, if, I, if I'm checking employee, um, and I know that there is an uh, email address, so I want to validate if the email address is correct or not. So in this case, uh, I can check uh, the invalid emails. So this is email underscore address should be uh, zero. And I can, so if you don't specify any validity format, then the validity is checked based on um, the null values essentially. So if there is any null value, then it is considered to be invalid. So I'm going to do uh, specify the validity format. So I can do valid format is email. Now, when I run this, if there are any invalid emails, it's going to tell me there is something wrong. So here, all the email addresses are um, uh, as expected. So there is no problem with the, with the data. And I can show you what happens when, if I modify the data, so let me quickly um, open the employee table. Uh, here I can see the emails and uh, imagine if I change this to uh, adventure works without anything and uh, just for the sake of argument. So I'm gonna change this to this and then commit the data. And when I run the check again, um, you will see that there is at least one value that is not uh, compliant, that is not a valid email. And we have several other options here in terms of uh, validity format. Uh, you can check for uh, dates, you can check for uh, IPv4 or IPv6 addresses, and you can check for UUIDs, you can check for integers, you can check for some money formats as well, and um, date formats, different date and timestamp formats. These are all available in the documentation. Now, uh, there is another uh, feature here where um, imagine that I have all these facts tables, as you've seen here, um, there are several of them, um, at least uh, I think around um, uh, more than five. <laughs> I'm not gonna count them right now. Um, so for all these facts tables, I want to make sure that there are some checks that are run. So for that, we have this for each construct. 
so you can just uh, do uh, for each table t in list of tables and that is going to be fact underscore let's say call center and fact uh, underscore um, let's say sales quota and for these things i want to make sure that row count is greater than zero uh, so when i run this thing um, so what uh, sort of code is doing or sort of cl is interpreted to be okay loop over all these tables that are listed and then run all the checks on this one so you can add multiple checks here if they have a similar kind of structure you can keep adding more and more checks here for specific uh, columns in there and obviously if you have 200 tables like this you're not going to type all this um, table names so you can quickly check that by by using a wildcard syntax so in that case it's going to loop over pretty much all the tables and then as you can see here um, every possible um, fact underscore table is checked there now um, you can also specify um, uh, all these checks into uh, different table checks into single file or you can also add additional checks files so that means if I have a checks two dot YML, and then in this one I can add checks for, for example, then product, and then count greater than zero. Uh, now I have two files as uh, as you've seen checks one and checks two. Uh, here you can see checks one, checks and checks two, and you can pass those uh, check file arguments as multiple check ch parameters to the command line so here i want to run it on adventure works and then ch checks dot yaml and then you have checks two dot yaml so it will um, sorry i think i messed up the second parameter yeah there you go so here you can see it's actually combining both checks files and then giving you the total 11 checks so the dim product is coming from the check for dim product is coming from checks two and this uh, for each table as you've seen coming from checks file so you can uh, divide your checks into several different um, several different files um, based on your domain for example all the sales checks can be in sales checks.yaml all the finance checks can be in finance checks.yaml um, so all these uh, uh, so that's the quick taste of what what you can do with uh, sort of cl uh, we have this open source repository available called uh, sort of data sort of cl workshop in this uh, at this url uh, you can check that one out and all the checks that are i only given you a simple taste of what is available you can check all the possible checks sorry for the pun uh, here in the documentation um, every uh, type of check is fully documented and you can try these things out and soda cl workshop comes with um, a pre configured docker compose so the database that you see on the left hand side the one that uh, that i showed in the demo is also part of this uh, docker compose uh, when you run docker compose up you can get the data as well as soda core and you can open a shell into the soda core and then run the stuff and the soda cl folder is mounted on the docker container so you can start editing the checks files here so you don't need to do any configuration any installation everything is provided here so i hope you're going to give this a try and um, please join our Slack community. Uh, there is a link in the readme at the bottom and uh, join the Soda CL preview program and uh, stop by and say hello to me. Um, uh, so I'm, my name is Vijay there. So you can poke us and uh, provide us your feedback. So that's it uh, from me. Thanks for watching.